in 2016 was when the world lost music legend Prince. However, the Grammy and Oscar winner left his mark not only on the planet, but his home state of Minnesota too. His massive compound Paisley Park was built here in 1987, and it consisted of a private home and a studio spanning 65,000 square feet. After his passing, the space has also become a memorial for his fans to visit. Prince also lived in other beautiful mansions over the years, some in Los Angeles, and even one right here in Toronto. We'll check out a few of Prince's former estates, but he always seemed to return to Minnesota, where he owned several properties. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Prince Rogers Nelson was a singer, songwriter, record producer, actor, director, and more, who's regarded as one of the greatest musicians of his time, as well as a guitar virtuoso. He worked with multiple genres of music and performed in a flamboyant, androgynous persona that set him apart. Aside from his unique style, Prince boasted a wide vocal range with an insane falsetto and his high-pitched screams. He sold over 150 million records worldwide, ranking him as one of the best-selling artists of all time. Prince's many awards included an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and the Grammy President's Merit Award, just to name a few, while well, he was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2004. When Prince passed away, his net worth at the time was estimated $150 to $300 million, making him a financial giant. Along with his wealthy estate, Prince's Paisley Park studio alone was worth at least $7 million, while his nearby Chen's Hassan property, spanning 188 acres, was valued at $16 million. He passed away at his beloved estate in Chen's Hassan, Minnesota, and Prince once told Oprah he would always live in that state because it's so cold it keeps the bad people out. He maintained several properties there over the years, including his childhood home in North Minneapolis, his Paisley Park studio, and a 188 acre site in Chanhassen where he lived in a big yellow house with amenities like a windmill and tennis court. Hey guys, it's Care the Vampire Slayer and I'm bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, we post a new video daily. Today we're checking out where the late legend Prince used to call home over the years, including his compound in Minnesota, Paisley Park, his Toronto mansion and more. If you like this video, we've also done house tours and other icons like Elton John and Tina Turner, which we'll link to at the end. As always, Always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat. And now, let's get into this video. First, let's check out a place Prince used to own right here in Toronto. When the singer married his wife Manuela Testolini, who's from here, he showed his love for the vibrant city and bought a mansion in the ultra-exclusive Bridal Path community in Toronto, the same neighborhood rapper Drake currently lives. This white house boasted massive columns and looked like your run-of-the-mill mansion, but it's said that the inside there was an all-purple room, which makes sense for Prince. Just last year, this home actually came on the market again for a whopping $16.8 million, but in all fairness, the place is massive. Records show that Prince paid $5.5 million for the nearly two acre property back in 2001, and in 2011, the place sold for $8.3 million. It's since been publicly listed multiple times at different price points. Prince's former Toronto mansion spans 14,280 square feet with six beds and 10 baths, and Prince lived here until he and Manuela got a divorce in 2006. The iconic estate has soaring ceilings, floor to ceiling windows and a ton of fresh white paint throughout. There are spaces like a sprawling ballroom and equally sprawling entryway with white marble floors and a vaulted ceiling. The home may be a bungalow on only one level, but it has dramatic flow as per listing materials, as well as a majestic ambiance for entertaining on a global level. One of the large living rooms has a ton of windows and natural light, as well as hardwood flooring and a built-in fireplace and entertainment wall. There's a new chef's kitchen with large island that doubles as a snack bar and top of the line appliances. There's also a casual eating space here with French doors that open to the yard. Among the many features of Prince's mansion, there's a home theater, an indoor spa, a home gym, billiards room, and even a salon. The billiards room in classic Prince fashion has purple shag carpet and a retro bar. While any Prince fan might jump at the chance to own this unique property, a prospective buyer might want to put in new carpets and repaint. There are also features like a master seven piece ensuite bathroom, an expanse 
extensive dressing room and heated floors throughout. Outside, the grounds are just as impressive and perfect for entertaining. There are stone terraces surrounding the property, a custom entry gate, gardens, a tennis court, swimming pool, and cabana. Just last year, a mega mansion that Prince once threw legendary parties and secret concerts at came up for sale at a massive $29.9 million. While he's lived in a few LA mansions in the past, this is the one he was renting and famously painted purple. The home was perched on a hill near Beverly Hills and the Sunset Strip and spanned 18,000 square feet inside with six floors, perfect for entertaining herds of guests. It was built in 1953 by architect Hal Braxton Hayes, who used the opulent home as an epic bachelor pad before other Hollywood stars would call it home, including Elizabeth Taylor and Carlo Boozer. There are two structures on the property, including a 10 bedroom main mansion and a 3,000 square foot guest house. The palatial main mansion has a large ballroom, a wine room, terraces with views of the city, an ocean, and an indoor gym. Interiors have a lot of dark woods, marble flooring, and fireplaces throughout. This place is really all about the amenities. There's a rooftop tennis court that has sweeping views of LA, another sports court, as well as a pool with a stone grotto that looks like the famous one at the Playboy Mansion. When Carlos Boozer bought the mansion in the early 2000s, he rented it out to Prince for a while, but when he got back, he found Prince made quite a few changes to the place. The gold lines that formerly sat at the gates were replaced by Prince's purple symbol, and the stairs leading to the home were covered in purple carpet. The floors inside had black carpet, his weight room was turned into to a dance floor and one spare bedroom became a hair salon. According to records, Boozer tried to sue Prince saying he also painted purple stripes outside, but he never went through with these charges. Prince passed away at Paisley Park, his estate and studio in Chantasson, Minnesota, located just outside Minneapolis. These days, the famous property is regarded by fans and has turned into a memorial site to honor the late musician. Paisley Park was named after Prince's song of the same name and the complex features recording studio a nightclub, offices and more, and elsewhere, a private retreat where Prince used to stay. The $10 million property spans 65,000 square feet, but he didn't always live there either. The front lobby features second level balconies and clouds decorating the walls, as well as skylights with his love symbol number two on the floor. Elsewhere, there's a relaxing music room with Prince's favorite purple hue surrounding the space, and also on the first floor, there are many production spaces, recording studios, a sound stage, and a rehearsal hall. Upstairs, there are executive offices and private quarters, as well as a vault, which is said to hold Prince's famous lot of unreleased music and recordings. He even had a private nightclub in here with room for 1,000 people, boasting a dance floor, TVs, and projectors. While most think of Prince's Chanhassen home as the Paisley Park complex, this place wasn't finished until 1987 and still wasn't his only residence. In the Purple Rain era, he actually lived in a purple house on Kiowa Trail nearby, which over overlooked Lake Riley and Chanhassen. He then moved into a big yellow house on Galpin Boulevard in 1985, which was located on a 188 acre piece of land, and Prince decked out the three story mansion with plenty of features. There was a home studio and stained glass windows, as well as a purple acoustic piano. Footage from inside the Galpin house appeared in a video for the Get Off remix as well, but much of it was kept mysterious. This estate is now worth an estimated $16 million, and it's made up of a set of land parcels that Prince purchased throughout the 80s. His main yellow house also had a sprawling tennis court and a windmill. He owned the property until he passed away in 2016, but once Paisley Park opened, Prince spent less and less time here and moved his studio equipment to Paisley Park. Now we've looked at a few of the legendary Prince's former homes, so I think I'll wrap up this house tour here. After checking out his mansions like the one in Toronto, the LA rental he painted purple, and Paisley Park, what did you guys think? Did you have a favorite? I liked his Toronto mansion best, but we didn't really get to see enough of his final properties in Minnesota to get a good enough idea. Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you haven't, I would love it if you subscribe to my personal channel and we can totally chat over there. Just drop me a comment. I'll link you my latest video. What you gonna do? And I'm gonna give you my review, what I liked about it, what I didn't like, what freaking disturbed me. Killing a baby? And it definitely made me sad. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.